Hopefully it's still recording here. I had to hit the space bar to keep it. Might have to shut that standby mode thing off. That's going to be a problem. And it started doing that when I reinst when I installed Windows 64-bit. So that must be part of it, because it wasn't doing that before when I had the 32-bit Windows. This is interesting. Um, but yeah, the carnal Christian doctrine, it has to do with, like, easy believism, which I always talk about. And I think that basically the basis of it is that whenever... The easy believism teaches that, you know, a person can be saved and not have, like, any kind of changed life, you know, not have a prayer life or not be interested in reading the Bible. They basically go and continue living like a lost man, but they'll say they're just a carnal Christian. Yeah, they're saved, but they're just carnal. So I think that I wanted to look at the word carnal to kind of understand that more to see if there was any, um, anything to that. I remember that I have laundry in the washer, so I'm going to run away real quick and put it in the dryer. It's probably done now, and then I'll be back, so hang on with me. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, I'm going to color the other one, which I was going to do in all red, but now I probably won't. Uh, I don't know how much this red marker will hold up. I don't know if I want to talk too much more about the, the carnal word study, because I'll probably just do that later. Uh, anyway... I will talk about how I was just thinking again about the penal substitutionary atonement and a brother has donated you know, some good books on that issue that I need to get to study and more. But I'm always trying to do different things and then you know I come back to something I was interested in, interested in later but I am really interested in that so I need to get into that. The thing that bothers me about the penal substitutionary atonement, though, one of the things is just that saying that Jesus was punished for sin. He was punished for our sins, you know, in the sense that he took on our sins, and, you know, he's basically punished as a sinner. Now, first of all, we know that Jesus had no sin. And I think that penal, penal substitutionary atonement kind of makes Jesus to be a sinner. You know, uh, even though they'll say, well, it's not his own sin, but he was punished for our sins. I don't like the idea of Jesus being punished for sin, period. And I don't think that the Bible teaches that Jesus was punished for sin uh, in that sense. You know, that he was punished as guilty, basically. And the reason why people think this is because they say that sin can't go unpunished. Uh, you know, somebody has to pay for, for one way or the other. And so, before I can continue that thought, i got to think about what, where I'm going to go next. With the, uh, coloring here. 
<laughs> so, I'm trying to think if I could do like different colors than what I already did, but there's not very many options. No, I don't know. Just like brown, or here's like a dark green. You know, I could do it black. The black marker would probably have dried out. I don't know if the brown is or not. It'd be risky. I know I use the black and the brown a lot. I do the brown and the dark green. I mean, orange? Orange has never been used yet, but I did red. But I don't care. We're going to go with orange. I don't know if this orange one's ready either. Maybe. 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 I don't know. I'm not really liking the idea of this, but. So first we will do hmm. You know, another interesting thing is I don't know how long the how long that red will last. If I can just do like God's word and orange or something and then do the fez and red again, that would be cool too. Let's just see. So it's a little different than just doing every word a different color, but the orange is already not looking too good as far as lasting, but maybe. So I don't like the idea of Jesus being punished for sin at all. He was without sin, and I don't even like the idea of him being punished vicariously for our sins. I still think that makes him a sinner. And people think that, you know, sin has to be punished. And we've all sinned. And, you know, even if we're believers, that, you know, sin has to be punished. And so if believers, you know, are forgiven of their sins, then... You know, Jesus must have been punished for our sins. But I think the thing is that, you know, I'm looking into the satisfaction theory of atonement, saying that, you know, God requires satisfaction. And so if Jesus lived a perfect life, then there's no need to be punished. Um, you know, I guess that vicariously, when we put our faith in Christ, then we get that benefit of, you know, his perfect satisfaction, and so therefore there is no need for punishment, and it's as if we never sinned. Um, so there's a lot to look into there, but I just, I see error with the, the penal substitutionary atonement. I just do not agree with that, and the more that I look into it, it seems like it's really tied to Calvinism, which... I hate when people try to tie all kinds of things to Calvinism when it's not necessarily true, so it's not really the best thing to say, but it really does seem like that's kind of an outcome of it. They say it's like a, it's a legalistic thing, and uh, Calvin was very legalistic. That's how he interpreted the scriptures. One, one of these that I have that I already did the cover for was uh, completely in red. So I don't know why. I really like black and red and white. It's pretty plain. But um, the one that I already put the cover on, the book wasn't even finished. Okay, we're going to attempt this. I think the red will last here. So I've got God's word in, in orange, and then what it says in red. It's different. So if God is satisfied, then there's no need for punishment. Um, also, you know, I think that punishment and death is kind of like a consequence for sin. 
and you know, I don't know. It's like some people look at it like God wants uh, sinners to be punished or whatever, but I think you also look at it as it's just a consequence of sin. And, you know, God doesn't want people to go through this, but it's just it's an outcome of it. So here's the paper slicer I got it on. I'm going to try to cut it as best as I can. It's not going to be perfect. But this, this will make it fit on the notebook better. Because the notebook's not quite... You know, it's because there's the the coils on there, the spring or whatever that's binding the notebook together. So a paper slicer is a little neat tool to have, really, to make little cards or whatever. It's a really cheap thing. If you're going to have like a study or something, you should get one of these. So it's definitely not perfect, but you can see up there and stuff. <laughs> I think uh, that's good enough. So... one, and then I think I will laminate these. I'm going to have to... I don't even know if I know where the lamination paper is. Oh, yeah. I think I might have it over here, actually. All my stuff organized, which is really nice. I would love to like mass produce these. I mean, obviously it takes a while to get these done, so I don't know how fast I can get these done, but maybe like one or two a month or something. But you know, if I'm gonna do it again, make like five or ten of them, then I can tell people I can send them out. I think I cut this right. I think I just didn't put it on here right because it looks about the same as the other one. I think it's just not not square as it should be. I cut it square, but it's it wasn't square on the paper there. So, I think it's going to be random which one I put on which one. Um, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let's see here. Get out the laminator. Too much. They're nice to have too. I mean, you have to buy the lamination sheets. Here's this. Can't see it perfectly from that view, but it's gonna come out down here. It goes in through here, and it needs to be plugged in. green, it's ready. You can't even see it there, but it's the light. I love having the stand to show things on the table. It's just so cool. Now, i got to figure out what I do with the lamination sheets. I thought maybe I'd have them over here, but... You can buy like sticker lamination sheets too. Like I have these. It basically peels off and will stick on it like a sticker. Uh, Single-sided laminating sheets. But I've also got these lamination 
pouches, basically, that you put something in and you run it through. Oh, I don't know what I did with those, though. Hmm. Where, where did they go? I think, I think they're up here. Maybe not. right in front of me. That's how it always is. Right in front of me. <laughs> 200 laminating sheets. There's still plenty left. So I'm getting some use out of these. There's one. And there's two. And the light still isn't green yet. I think. Basically, what you do is you put them in here however you want. Just open it up, double sided. I'm just going to open up that. slicer again. You can put it all the way in the top, it doesn't matter. Try to straighten it out. You know, gotta have plenty of room for it to come out of there. some more and I'm kind of waiting for my taxes but I don't know how much all that's really going to help for you know I had a lot of different ideas of things I wanted to do but basically I want to make I want to pay for some more intros from R render forest to use for the videos because I think they're nice and easy uh, they look good you know 3d presentations and stuff I can make my own intros over time with the movie maker but for now it's just easy just to get something that's nice like that and put it together but with the video editor, I can, uh, you know, put them together, put the intro on there. Okay. 
Maybe it's for that blue light to turn blue. I mean, it says ready, so I think that's what it was. I guess it's not green. Usually stuff is green when it's ready to go, right? But blue, in this case. But, yeah, at the end of the week I'll get paid, and I'm going to probably purchase some of those intros, and then I want to do some really good videos on some basic doctrines like the deity of Christ and stuff again. Who knows, but that, that, that's what's going to kind of what I'm waiting on. So you put it in, I'm going to put it in on the end where it was already closed up. It'll take it through itself. Okay, let me see if this will... Yeah. Okay, it'll start feeding it through. Basically, this thing is just heats up and it just melts the plastic. You know, and I could have used the lamination sticker stuff because you don't even need the back of this to be laminated, but whatever. I'm not sure exactly how I want to have this to the notebook if I'm going to use like regular glue or glue stick. Whatever glue I probably have is probably dried out now. I probably don't even have that. But here it's nice and laminated now. And you know, this is what I use for the church and stuff. So it's fairly cheap to have one of these. I mean, if you get like the 200 pound thing like that, I think it, that was, I got that on Amazon. I mean, that's going to last a long time unless you're doing like mass producing crazy stuff gonna last me a while. But I do make use of it, you know, and sometimes, you know, not just for stuff for the Bible, but for anything. I like sometimes I get menus from restaurants or something and laminate them. It's nice. Just anything. You know, you can make little uh cards with scriptures on them. I don't know if I should have done these all the way at the top like this, if I should do this, but I did for the other one, so I'll do this for this anyway, but you can make little cards on little index cards or something of Bible scriptures and laminate them and carry them around your wallet. Go over them when you're sitting, waiting in line or something. It makes it look a lot shinier and nicer when it's laminated like this. But obviously it's to protect it also. Then I'm going to have to slice it again. Okay, good. Oh, shut that off. That cool off for a minute. I'm gonna unplug it all. Alright. Did I put the slicer away?
paper slice says Westcott. Does that have anything to do with Westcott and Horror? Could. Maybe it seriously is. Alright. That's done. Now, I'm going to throw away the scraps. And I'll be right back. Okie dokie, now how am I going to glue these two here? It's a good question. Glue, sti glue stick sounds like an easy answer, but these are so old, I don't know if they're good anymore. I mean, they're not. It's going to have to be the Elmer's glue, which I don't even know if that's good anymore. Okay, we're going to attempt it, this kind of makes things a little messier, but these glue sticks just need to be thrown away. So yeah, still got a lot more organizing and cleaning up to do, just stuff like this, you know, if it's junk it doesn't need to be here, and you know, I need to replace it sometime, these are going to have to go, some of those markers. Unfortunately, I don't even know how I want to do this, but I guess that I can just put it a little bit of everywhere. It really needs to be on the edges. I want the edges to stay down. Well, this isn't really cut on here perfectly, but hopefully that'll be good enough to keep that on there. So, I'm just going to set this on the side and let it dry. Get this one on here. Good enough for me. Got these. I used to save a lot of 
envelopes and stuff. I got these basic plain white envelopes. I don't know if it, they need more protection than this or not. to get these sent out soon, so here's those. Well, if you guys watched this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll give you guys some inspiration to do something like this. Hopefully in the future I'll make more of these and hand them out. I really need to. I mean I'll probably try to soon. Maybe this week I'll I'll start start a project like this. I don't know. I mean I wanna I want to work on more of the doctrines that I believe in and stuff, and, you know, unfortunately this one has some blank pages in the end of it still. I'm wondering if this one has King James. Not sure. start getting into writing scriptures again, and we'll just make it a routine every day just to hack away at a little bit, I'll have to figure something out. So that's that. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless.